What's up? What's up? We're here. Um, another Sunday, and my cup is Dolph empty. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I'm fading quick. Um, but cheers, everybody. We are here Sunday. Uh, so Cup of Joe is is on. I'm, I'm glad that I added this stream because it, it gives like a nice in-between. It's like a, ha a nice halfway mark for streaming. So I do the Wednesdays with, with the Zaid. Speaking of, uh, we got Zaid's up in chat saying I'm showing my true colors today. <laughs> um, was that gray? Is my true colors gray? Um, uh, B-Rose is here. What's up, B-Rose? Um, and uh, I always forget we, we're calling Zaid Colonel now. I need to do that more often. And Johnny Cage is here. What's up? Uh, there we go. My mic wasn't set up. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can hear me now a little better. Um, so yeah, we've got plenty of things going on right now. Um, hugs, not drugs, dude. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, I'm, I think I'm on Johnny Cage's uh, camp on that one. Hugs, not hugs, not drugs. Um, you know. Oh, he's talking about my color scheme for the vid. Um, my thumbnail, maybe. Okay, well. I uh, actually have sent out some links to people, um, and if they want to jump on, go for it. Um, I want to have a little bit of a discussion uh, while I drew some drawing as well. Um, so that's sweet to do sometimes. Um, and yeah, hopefully some new people popping there. And speaking of new, we got our good friend, Mr. Brink, here from uh, Genuine Comics, Perfect 10. Um, so, I've been doing all the preliminary stuff for another book, which we'll get to. I talk about it quite a lot. Um, and all the sketch cards and stuff. Well, I'll be drawing sketch cards today. So for Star Circuit's uh, fulfillment. Sketch cards. Cards. Sketch cards. Uh, what's up? Morning, Joe. Morning, everybody. I'm here. I'm awake somewhat. You're doing sketch cards, and I'm working on page one line art. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sequentials are, sequentials are a different beast. Um, so let's, uh, before we do this here, let's, um, because I got to transition my camera. There's only have one right now. I got to transition my camera. Uh, for all you folks out there, first time channel uh, watchers, um, I have a book called Star Circuit. I'm sure everybody knows that. But just for a good transition, play the trailer real quick. Um, it's uh, probably printing within a week. You know, there's uh, a little bit of a back and forth with uh, a printer right now. So we'll see what's happening. I know everybody's probably having the same trouble, whoever's using comic impressions. But uh, before the trailer, we've got another special guest. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Fire, wind, water, heart. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> oh man. It's Captain Planet up in his house. Right. Heart. Captain uh, Comic. Captain Comic. He's a hero. Dude. That show is probably one of the weirdest um oh yeah. Injections of and wasn't weight. wasn't the magic school bus kids didn't they grow up to become the captain planet heroes mm. oh is, is that the crossover really are, no. are you guys serious you don't know this i don't know <laughs> i didn't know how the, the fire ring could actually uh, i don't think you could, i don't think that dude ever went to school so hey, i'm looking it up now you do all this thing i'm fine okay. i'm gonna play the show for star circuit while i transition my camera but uh, yeah yeah kick you just star circuit everybody Welcome to the future, a place where you can find anything you desire. If the burner gangs don't find you first, where the fastest racers are artificial, and if you're human, Don't stand a chance. Star 
Circuit. Welcome. Come on, Eric. Always got to go a second time, Joe. I know, dude. It's the replay. That um, trailer is dope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's dude. a good impression. Gets that better. <laughs> Gets better every time. Yeah, dude. When when it's trailer time comes around again, I'll have to, I'll have to audition Billy. <laughs> For part this, two. This is why milk is poured over cereal. The sequel. So I see you brought up some of it, Jeremy. What do you yeah, got? Joe. Yeah, Joe. So the, the uh, Magic School Bus cast. <laughs> and the Captain Planet cast. Oh, look at them. Picture. Yeah. Check that out. Holy shit. Yeah. Holy Same shit. And everything. Hmm. God damn. I think it's been this done. Is like, this, is like, this is like figuring out that like Jurassic Park and Westworld are in the same like universe. Right? Yeah. Weird. Dude. Anyway, so good, good, good segue to no, I don't know. Segue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we got 24 eyes up in the house, and uh, that's segue enough. What's um, up, guys? Sweet stuff. Ooh, we got a new name, a new friend. Blue I always, I always know Billy's in because of that tech. That, that oh, my Metal Gear, the Metal Gear Solid. Mm, yeah, I'll turn, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it off. Oh, no, I enjoy it. <laughs> It's all good. It's, just, um, it's morning time, so it's like everybody's waking up, so all the notifications are coming in. You know, it's like that flood of that comes in. You know, it's like here's your dopamine hit, your morning one. <laughs> Get ready. Um, so yeah, I uh, tried to set up my camera quickly. The trailer's not nearly long enough for me to do the transition for this, um, but it's close enough. So we move this up a little bit. That actually might work. Stop shaking. Uh, so yeah, I started that one. I I was planning to do sketch arts all week, but couldn't get there, you know. Um, and and so last week we had Kenneth Rockford come over and watch me draw, which is probably the most surreal thing um, for nice. me. And that was fun. That was yeah, nice little chat. Um, but <laughs> yeah, um, had it was fun. Uh, Lord Crackheads here, bringing up the big question, you, question you. inside of a question. Um, well, I want to talk about that, uh, and I, there's a reason why I wanted people on because I think everybody's got their own opinions. Not so straightforward when you should leave, like a stability of like having a day job or even just like a part time job uh, and go full time comics or you know some variation of that. You know, so when should you? Uh, huh? Should you? I, I always to. Oh. Be serious. I like to say when should you instead of just should you because I think it's inevitable if you have the seriousness for the craft. Um, but that's just me. Um, maybe maybe do you have a do you have a particular viewpoint on this? I know both you guys I think are full time artists, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's good to know. Uh, let's let's uh, first <laughs> smash that like button. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And say hello to Sherry. Um, no sure. I'm working on all the hails. I'm generally not good at like doing the whole at function, so I usually like just capitalize it and shorten it, everybody's name to say. Hey, but that. Trying to do it right this time. Uh, twenty-four eyes says seven five, Billy. Seven five. Seven five. Does so, Sherry have uh, a new avatar? Um, potentially. Okay. She drew that. That's a self-portrait, I believe. Um. She doesn't have blue hair anymore. She had right. for a time. I, feel, I like. feel like the last time, like it was a different avatar. Maybe could be. She she likes to change it up as as we as we do. Um, so yeah, uh, maybe Billy or Jeremy you got a you got a take on uh, quitting your day job or just Billy first. Mm, Billy first. I think that uh, it there's so many factors that, that take into place for it because it's like uh, first one, it's just like, do you really like you have to take an honest look at yourself and like your skill set and everything and be, and, and, and really be like kind of brutally honest with yourself to like 
would people really pay me? You know, like, like if I look at other artists that are being like paid, like, you know, in whatever field that you might be going into, whether it be like comics or gaming or, um, you know, studio matte painting or whatever, it's like, would somebody want to pay me for like what I'm putting out right now? Like even at the lowest bottom tier, you know? And then the other thing is like, do you want to like, uh, where are you at financially stable to like, if, if things go south, you know, and then, um, cause that's, a, that's a huge thing. And then, uh, and then kind of, do you have the balls to bet it all on yourself and throw the dice really? Cause that's what, that's what it kind of comes down to really the la the last one more than the dice. It would say the first two. That's the final choice. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because it's like, <laughs> Because well, because it's what a lot of artists aren't ready for, as far as like you know, like public critique of all your work is a really heavy thing that a lot of artists aren't used to like having scrutinized. You know, it's just like especially when you want money for your shit. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like you know, you have to be ready for the people that just don't like your stuff. You know, uh, and jo Johnny Cage makes a point that uh, I think me and Joe always kind of come back to is that it it, yeah. it really depends on everyone's particular situation. You know, uh, because life takes us all down different roads all the time. And so the yeah. opportunities come. Uh, also, being creative, you'll be creative in finding ways of doing this. <laughs> so, like, that's the other Yeah, thing. to make it work, right? Yeah. If you're yeah. creative, you'll find creative ways to make it, like, work. I yeah. mean, um, I mean, j just like, because there's a lot of us that, like, do... Um, collision bomb. Yeah. that either do or did like art adjacent style jobs, you know, whether it be like, uh, color correcting photographs to, uh, um, you know, commercial artwork or, uh, you know, typesetting stuff for like page layout or, you know, like a lot of us, you know, like already have, uh, kind of like other side creative outlets. I think that we try to like, you know, it's all part of like your hustle when you're trying yeah. to like get there, you know? Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. Like, you're going to do, you're going to do some t-shirt designs. You're going to do some stickers and stuff for like other people for like shit that you don't want to do. It's like, Hey, can you do like stickers and like, you know, uh, bar napkins from my fucking tavern that I'm opening? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, how much you pay me? Yeah. All right. Yeah, Let's do this. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, and you're talking I, about, Go uh, ahead. I was just yeah. You're talking about odd jobs uh, to make it work. Yeah. You're, yeah. I I've done the shows like the art shows. Like you go out there with your easels and all your prints or your pictures, and you're doing a demo on the side too. That's I. That's mainly what I did from like 16 on up to about coming out here to Florida like uh, nine years ago, Joe. Like 2012 with, the, with you guys. Oh uh, yeah, that's when I so. Got it. Uh, but yeah, like doing shows at Ren fairs, doing shows at like normal state fairs, you know, uh, and like to build your confidence. I mean, and, dude, I, I used to airbrush t-shirts at, yeah. at a, at a, uh, at a amusement park. Like, <laughs> Oh, how about a flea market? I did flea yeah. markets too. Yeah, I, I never well, had a flea market. Like swap, our, like our, our flea markets didn't have, or I, I didn't have access to a generator that I could bring out for like the compressor and stuff. Oh so. yeah, 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 yeah. There's a thing here that we're not necessarily bringing up. We 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 did bring it up for a second, but to do these odd jobs, um, most likely you're not making enough to pay rent on those odd jobs. Most likely. Well, so, can anybody nowadays? I mean, probably on the not. normal job. Uh. I mean, it's like, it's like, do you, do you want to go through a little bit of the ups and downs of that? Or you can have the day job be more stable, but you are able to take less of that work. Uh, but like I said, you jumping onto like that kind of format of taking odd jobs, what we're missing is your kind of standard of living. Uh, so if you're yeah. rooming with yeah. a bunch of people, rent's low makes it easy if you just say in my situation just bought a house there's like you're you're a little bit on the like the bank is literally watching the money come in and out like they're they're keeping an eye on you for a while um so there's different things like it, if you're spending a lot of money you really can't put yourself in a position to just be able to take odd jobs you know so and eric mcintyre says uh odd jobs 
Yeah. Um, oh no, when I set off on this particular uh, kind of comic book journey, like uh, I had to totally budget and like take everything down to its like. What do I? What are my bare necessities that I really need? Because this other thing is making me super fucking happy. Mm-hmm. So it's like, do I? I mean, it's like, you know. <laughs> But it's a choice. Food, food come on. <laughs> no, not really. I'm just. But, joking, it, but you know, you don't get into this and and think that it's going to be roses if you're like you have to respect the move that this is, and a lot of people don't think art is a an actual like money making job it, because of the criticism that it takes to kind of get tougher, work through it, beat past the rest of the competition, develop your own skill to make it worth paying for. Like Billy was kind of saying is like, that's a long journey in and of itself that has nothing to do about putting the pen, like the pen to the paper. It's all about like your own oomph. So right. like the, you know, you work the day job to keep you moving artistically. You, you, if you work at Subway, you're not a sandwich artist if you're doing art on the side. You're an artist who works at Subway to get by. Right. And Joe, uh, out here in, in Florida, we, you know, you and I have been able to work day jobs with paychecks, you know, at, that used our art. And But a lot of those times, like, especially like in the creative, more creative stuff, they even have like clauses that say you can't make anything, you know, anything that you make while you're hired with us, even outside of the job. It, you know, that's how. Oh, yeah, those ones, <laughs> those, ones are, those ones are like, I, I've never seen any company really been able to enforce those ones where they're no. like, yeah, when you're at home, anything you draw is ours. It's like, but I've seen those, but I've seen those electronics. Co- I've seen those contracts, and- yeah. Electronic yeah, yeah, yeah. Arts did it, and uh, I heard stories galore with game developers yeah. out here well, about that. Well, like, there's there's film companies too that like do that, mm-hmm. and they're, they're like, yeah, anything that you like write or like come up with or draw, and they and it, it's even so far as like they'll put into your clauses that uh, anything that you talk about with a third party, if they come up with an idea, we yeah. own that too. And I was just like, what? I was reading the fine print, like, dude. They can't own the shit of the shit my friends make. Like, there's yeah. no way this could be binding. Like, <laughs> <You're> weird. <laughs> but you know, but but the, but it's basically it's like lawyer speak. They're just throwing everything at you at once, saying like you signed it. But like you know, they'll know they have to litigate it later if they actually want to try to steal your shit. You know? Yeah, I always try to say cover <laughs> your butt legally on every avenue, and Joe's actually been a pretty good testament oh, to that yeah, in the past. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, it's and, the sexy lips right there. That's my favorite of the lips. Oh, what's oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> like, this is how you do sketch cards, quick. <laughs> but um, so um, I was gonna bring up because this all ties together. They do it a few different ways, and I freaking it was awesome that Jose uh, on Eve, uh, Ethan stream last night brought this up um, in animation. You was saying that they will straight up buy your IP. Yeah. So oh yeah. Option. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty much option you just so they can can it, not to you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. Option. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, spe- specifically to shelve it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just to shelve it, just so there's not a compete. Like uh-huh. even if they have you sign a paper that's a you know non compete, they still don't even want to take that chance. Like later down the road, it, doing it. I, I, I generally try to be a nice person and run my business stuff as honestly as I can because my dad said the more honest you are, the less you have to keep track of. And like, I just want to keep run, running forward, but this business is cutthroat. You're going right. to want to trust some people and they're going to seem like you can trust them. Uh, like, it's not you're not going to get paid a lot. <laughs> you know, you you'll uh, you'll throw something out there, and then all of a sudden, the see, money but, doesn't. Now, but I, see, that was that was with that, traditional art when I was doing portraiture. Like that, get, it that depends on who you deal with, you know. So choosing the job skill again, but if you live off it, you'll get desperate sometimes and take work. Well, I mean, and 
it's maybe it sounds cliche, but like I feel like we're we are actually living at a very uh, opportune time mm-hmm. for artists in general, mm-hmm. collab collaboratively, and because of the pandemic. Like the pandemic, like oh actually, yeah, like, yeah. Pe- people don't realize that like the pandemic caused a huge swell worldwide for people wanting entertainment. Uh-huh. Period. Whether uh-huh. that be games, comics, phone, you know, you know, mobile shit, uh, animation, move, you know, it's like they there's like a, a need for that shit out there, and with like the way that like uh, we're so used to like working from home now, like artists being able to collaborate and like work together as like teams from home now, like mm-hmm. can it works like fucking clockwork, and and you see people driving up and are able to like as groups make a pretty decent living and it's it's a weird thing because we're almost getting to like choose our coworkers in a different way that we've never had before it's a lot like what you talk about jeremy this creator renaissance that we're going through it's it's kind of bizarre i think it's exciting because it utilizes yeah. what we're doing right now is you know the streaming the, all this but how many times have you heard people on podcasts say, oh there's amazing technology well we're through that so what are we going to do with it you know so uh, like, uh, I was, I was on a good point here a second ago about like, again, kind of the getting the right kind of jobs, the right kind of opportunities that are jumping up. Um, and what I was kind of talking about was about like 10 years ago. Like this was stuff before now, like you're talking about working in teams, people are actually finding out they're getting more work done, you know? And then these businesses are trying to say, Oh, we got to get back you know, group everybody back, you know, into the, into the office. And some, some groups work better together, you know, at that sketch table or at that round table and bouncing ideas back and forth. I've been part of those teams and it's exciting about that. Um, But look at what CG has done itself during the, during the pandemic. I mean, that surge that we're seeing is in it. Like, yeah, for sure, which we're talking to them right now. We got yeah. Power in the hair. We got Hex Allen. These are all oh, guys that are starting their their own thing, and um, I feel like it's the only way to like, really um, in the future plan for some time in the future where you could quit your job uh, confidently because that's where you make the money. Where you're not giving, you know, if you're getting a page rate, it's it's where you know exactly what money you're going to get per time you're putting in. But if you start a business, if you start something that brings in money, you know, like with passive income or, you know, different pieces of merch that add to it, you're getting more than just what you're getting on a page rate. So, um, I, I suggest construction as a day job. I, I suggest it as a day job. Oh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> You'll 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 stay in shape. You'll eat well. You'll sleep well. But it's work that you get up at like five o'clock in the morning and you end your end your day. I like my dad does it when the sun goes down. He's old school. So but like so he could be out to like seven eight o'clock. But he's out there at four o'clock in the morning. I don't get it. But hmm. it's like that starts to get your brain kind of creating these good habits of measurement angles, break, using your eyeballs to break things down along with using your tools and your straight edges and process, process, process. That way, when it comes to your own stuff, can you bring a lot of that over into it? So the day jobs aren't always a bad thing, depending on what you're doing. It's kind of like Kung Fu, you know, like, or like Karate Kid. I'm not. I don't mean real kung fu, Joe. Don't come at me. But like you know, the paint the fence, the wax the car. Does it have know? to be construction worker? Could it be like coal miner? Oh, uh, <laughs> I'd say that's a bit too repetitive. <laughs> like in one spot, a little too dangerous. Like as far as the black lung. Yeah, the black but, lung. I would bring. And, I, and construction has its dangers, guys. I'm missing a fingertip because of a router saw, so I can't really vouch for it. You might not have hands to draw with. Later. The way I would put it is the, uh, <laughs> construction, construction here. Construction so maybe. here about no matter what you pick, you're going to get something out of it. You just have to pay attention to what it is. So, right. You know, if you're a waiter, you know you can work part time. That's a good. You can work your own schedule, which is good. But yeah, the main piece you need to put together from that job is. Like work on, you know, you're naturally going to do it, but you're going to work on people skills. And that's yeah. something that most artists don't really have, I would say. Uh, the people skills 
But table um, serving is like two thirteen an hour, three nineteen if you're doing night shifts, and when you've had enough drinks thrown in your face, it tends to not work out. Like you well, get tired out real quick. You're a people person, bro. That's oh, like, dude, I did it for six years. I was I was good at it. It's just on those hot nights, the hot mm -hmm. nights, the bad nights, the understaffed nights, you know. And out in, uh, where we were from, uh, Shelbyville, could you imagine? Well, you were yeah. there. You knew it. Here, you had, look, serving, I think, <laughs> probably more, even more lucrative than maybe construction. Um, like, yes. just, just be in the right restaurant, you know, and be right, the right, kind right. of persona. Right, right, you know, right, right, right. You can bring the 200, 300 bucks a day if you, if you, and for four hours or whatever it is, you know, bartending or, or serving. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm just thinking, like, no matter what you have, look for the, the silver lining there. So while you're not drawing and, and and pursuing your, you know, art, like look at the, 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 you know, the silver lining, like you said, if you're in a particular cool, even if you're working in a cool building, pay attention to all the things that you're working. The architecture, the yeah. architecture, you know, well, cause you might have to draw some architecture. You need some inspiration. Like right. how did it feel looking at uh, the building we worked at before and seeing the, the spine with the, horizontal lattice ribs like splitting the building in half it was like there was a slight little bit we were working in star circuit a little bit like the world I mean, just seeing that building a bit in my head right now you can pull a lot of you know things from wherever you're at so that's that was just my point there yeah. um my take on like when you should because that's really the question i wanted to put in like when should you because i think mm -hmm. If you're serious enough, you should be eventually. Um, so it all, like you said, Johnny Cage said, it's all depends. However, um, you, there is a strategy here. Like, uh huh. And we talked about some parts of it, and some of it is that you should be not spending a ton of cash on just random stuff, video games, and, right? You know, expensive cars and whatever. You know, um, like. I'll be aware of your spending habits and then comic uh, books are okay. Cause that's study material. Yeah. Uh, but still, <laughs> even that I would say if you're low on cash, getting, get the subscription, don't own them, you know, read them, you know? Um, but you know, if that's really going to hold you back from moving to the next step, you know, be careful how much you're spending, man. Um, go to the public library, read some comics, dude. Uh, if you're that poor. So, you know, there's like, there's a thing where, for me, I'm looking for the, the thing that I'm noticing now is I'm at the stage where probably my rates are good enough where I could quit my job. However, my speed isn't. So it also, you know, for art, it comes down to commercial artists. It comes down to how fast can you work? How fast and how many pages can you put out? I don't know. I, do, I just, guys, I just saw Joe put out a really awesome piece and if you guys go watch uh the global frequency here a couple episodes back you'll know what i'm talking about he pushed that up pretty fast it was and what an amazing piece joe well oh, done uh, i don't want to ignore the chat because i sometimes do that um i feel but, like yeah. i'm in a very similar place right now joe oh yeah like where Fine. i feel like my well i feel like where my my rates are sustainable but my speed isn't quite at where I should be. Right. Uh, it would still be yeah. a risk. There's always a risk no matter what, but yeah. and hey, more the more I'm, you. I'm feeling the same thing over here. I'm on one week and I'm not done with the first page line and color on my book. And I've been trying to focus pretty hard. So I'm feeling the same, like I'm not going fast enough. You know, that's a little more tricky, Jeremy, because like you're, you're emotionally attached to it. So you're working like extra on the page probably. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But like, you know, on your other client stuff, like pulling away and being like, oh, it could go a little bit more ridiculous with the detail or, you know, you know, use a couple of shortcuts to make it quicker. Um, those are the things that like all add up. Uh, right, when you, have, when you have 20 pages to color, how much longer do you spend on page seven? Right, to make it look, right. look really good. Cause even though like page seven is super important, but yeah, I still have 14 more pages to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like using that as like a, a hypothetical number seven, page number seven, you know, like whatever. Yeah. It's also your living situation too, outside of the, um, 
outside of like pay. You know, if right. you're if you're really if you got kids, if you got where's D Wag? People he, depending he, on you. D Wag has a dumpster. That was another part of my like decision was because like my daughter had just recently uh, come of age and was mm. getting ready to move out, and I was like, well, this is going to free up a bit of my uh, my money. Yeah, dude. I think that comes into play. Like, I don't, I don't have kids. Yeah. It, it opens me yeah. up. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you're younger and like you plan on, like, you want to have kids, like that's something you might want. To, I mean, because like that's. You know, becoming a parent is just as a noble pursuit as like wanting to become a comic mm-hmm. book artist, if not more. You know, so it's like, don't ever, don't ever feel bad if you're. That's the other thing. If we're gonna be talking about this, like, don't ever feel bad that like if your other decisions that you feel that you need to make in life, make it so that you're not ready to to take the plunge like completely mm-hmm. to try to become a professional artist. That's just like the way, it, the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. You know. I mean, I think I, I think I said this to Jedi once before. Is just try to make the decisions that like do good, and I don't mean do well, do good, and like <laughs> it's like if, a speak. What is this? Well, well, be it's, excellent it's like, to it's one like, another. No, dude. it's kind of a thing. It's like just if you have responsibilities, try to be mature about them. Don't jump into this if people depend on you financially. Right. <laughs> you know, like, unless well, I mean, it's a for sure thing, unless I mean, it's a for sure thing. I mean, I don't think I'm alone in this, like, uh, phenomena that I'm about to uh, describe that I think every artist gets to a certain, like, point, like, where they can point out uh, – an artist that's maybe not necessarily like a spiritual art mentor or even one of their teachers, Mm -hmm. but that like that another artist that they've come across where you're just like, wow, they draw like I do. But like, if I had like five to 10 more years, you know, like you just kind of look at their stuff and it's like, Oh, wow. I feel like that's like, like my stuff, but better. Like, yeah, I mean, have you guys like come across that where you're like, yes. oh, God, it just feels like, I mean, cause I don't feel like, like, I can't be like the only one. Cause like, I mean, there's certain artists where I'm like, I feel like that's what I'm doing. Just not that good. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> and if I just focus on this particular right, right, thing. Right, right, right. I mean, and, but it yeah. may not be, it may not even be what you're trying to like necessarily be attainable. Cause you're like, but I like these other things, but like, you can see like someone that are like, yeah, they're doing what I'm doing, but like at a, just a, a higher baller level, level, you know, yeah. baller level, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Go yeah. level. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> it happens to all of us. I mean, we, we yeah, yeah. people, and some of them are. I actually have a stream coming up with um, planning it right now, um, but it's all going to be about mentors and the need for mentors and the need mentors for mentor <sighs> somebody else. Um, so important. And so we'll be. I don't want to like go through all the talking points, but that's like pretty much what I, I uh, you know, I'll be talking about that with a couple guests. I'm thinking. Um, I was actually thinking I'll, 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 I'll reach out to a few more people, but, um, it may just be a one guy, but, um, it should be a fun convo. I think everybody needs to hear something like that. Uh, nice. The first thing before we move on, I do want to attend to the chat real quick. Uh, Revan, uh, Greg is up in here. We all know Greg. Uh, mm-hmm. and he said a big hail in the, uh, coming in. Skip is here. What's up, Skip? What's up, Skip? Shout out to Skip. Oh, Shout out to Matt Fowler, probably one of the most unsung like comic book publishers in CG. God, he, he's like talk about people that have like taken the plunge, like trying mm-hmm. to go full bore. Like, dude, that guy's like published and like produced like some top tier fucking comics. And uh, we're on our um, way. We're on our way. We're on our way. And and uh, <laughs> and he, I feel like he, like if his graph should be arcing slightly more higher than it currently is but I'm just because i'm a personal fan of like retro graphics books but yeah like sure. if we're talking about people that are, like you know it's like I, I don't know what uh what matt does for his other job like but like i mean the fact that like i said like dude it's not easy to have like published four books in the last couple of years like of the mm-hmm. of the tier artist quality that like retro graphics is putting out true did you get to see uh, our art pros with him you might have to go back I, I, I did. No, I absolutely did. I, I, I rewatched that shit because I only was able to catch part of it live and I was like, fuck, I need to rewatch this. 
Yeah, yeah. so insightful talking to that dude. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, but yeah, it brings up a lot of good points. Um, so yeah, talk yeah. about. I mean, that's what I talk about. I mean, like really, like throwing the dice and throwing yourself out there. Like Matt's one of those people that definitely has has done that, man. Like that guy's legit. Yeah, as le legit as you can get. Um, too legit to quit. Too legit to quit. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I thanks everybody for showing up. If you guys have any uh, your own opinions on this sort of thing, um, Riverbend Bear brings up a cool point about my mentor here. Like uh, Indiegogo mentor would be great. That's yeah, that's like a there's probably mentors with each subject, and you know the ones I'm talking about for are for art, but uh, it's great for that for all. You know, you need a mentor for like parenting, and you know that usually is your, <laughs> your parents. You know, all the all the rest. There is like. There is a thing where you're learning from. Well, you bring up mentors, well, well, and I and, and I sent you this thing probably about like ten minutes before the show, and mm -hmm. I think I did we watch the movie together when we lived together, but called the Peaceful Warrior. No, you told me to watch it. It's, I did watch it's it. Ba it's oh, based yeah. on a. Oh, go ahead, Billy. I, I just want to address River Ben. Like, if you're looking for an Indiegogo mentor, um, you should probably, at the very least, uh, if you're not following. Uh, Rob Arnold, he puts out the comic book replicator. Uh, pinned to his um, Twitter is a living document that he's been working on for the last, uh, you know, three, four years doing indie comics. That a lot of people have uh, looked to as like almost like like I said, it's a it's a living document on how to crowdfund. You know, not just based on one opinion. It's like giving you like all the broad options. You should, uh, nice. you should absolutely go check it out. Yeah. Can you link that in the chat? Uh, do, you, do you have a wrench? Come on out there, do so. Billy, you have a wrench? I don't know. I don't know if I have a wrench. I'm only seeing the stream yard. Oh, so. I've got a. Somebody's got to have one. Oh, Joe, I'm sending you a video once you give him a wrench that you get play on stream. Ooh, Billy. No, I'm telling you. Well, I know to play it. Yeah, yeah. You got to get Billy a wrench if he ain't got a wrench. Well, got wait, to, wait to play. Wait to play what? I, I made this little give wrench out videos that <laughs> or a video a video. It's like four seconds long. Whoever, <laughs> whenever we, I, I just sent it through you through Facebook. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, it's like quick little clip when. I had to do it with D-Wag on uh, last Friday. I was like, I'm going to make a video clip for this. So, and it, it refers to a peaceful warrior. It's a clip out of that movie. Uh, it's about a, a, it's based on the real guy. I think uh, the, the book was written by him, but he was an Olympic gymnast who was qualifying. And all of a sudden he gets in a motorcycle accident and it shatters his femur in 17 places. And under a year later, he ends up, training himself back up and, you know, does the, uh, the tryouts, at least he qualifies to try out, but you know, uh, the book kind of ends on that note, but, uh, it's an incredible piece about like ha controlling your will. If this is really what you want to do and really what you want to get into, it's a cool, uh, cool video to kind of just be like, yeah, people are going to tell you good things and bad things. And most of the bad things are them projecting themselves on you, their own fears. So you're going to have to learn to take a lot of the trash out. But Great point. Take, uh, the tra take the trash out. I want take that trash trash out. video um, as a file, Jeremy. Can you like send that to me? Like, like I'll try to. Yeah. I feel like Jeremy. Like that's like a. Uh, Jeremy's doing like a wrestling promo. Like, time to take, time to, time to take the, time to take the Dana White. Out. Dana White. No. <laughs> no. I'm, here to, I'm here to take the trash out. <laughs> That's Ooh. funny. That's funny. The Colonel speaks. That's hilarious. Billy. Oh my no. God. Coming off the stage, it's Baron Beckend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to take the trash out. Here oh, to he, said, you. he said the tagline. <laughs> Look at that. There you go. Um, we got I, put, I, put, I put it up. I put it oh, up. you got it too. Yeah. Like, oh. I did have a wrench. I didn't realize it. Oh, okay. Uh, Never mind. You don't have to play the video. I'm not with wrenches around here, you know? 
I have too many wrenches on my channel. <laughs> Got to pull it back. Um, and so, Cox always comes in. It's like too many wrenches. I um, wanted to bring up a couple other things on the same subject. Uh, so when you're trying to figure out this whole situation of, you know, pretty much lifestyle, you know, like you're trying to figure out how do I live a life where I'm getting the money that I want um, and the, the job I want, um, which is pretty tough, but <laughs> that's the bottom line because Jeremy said so. Yes. Um, <laughs> so there's like the, the biggest factor there you need to figure out is what you want, like value wise, you know, because the art life is not, not for everybody. Um, if you like making comics, some people think they like to make comics. They really like the idea of making comics. Um, and they just don't realize it until they have to do their first book or, you know, they see the, the struggle of pay. Or, I'm trying, <laughs> Joe. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh, dude, do you, do you subjectively, you know, apply that to you? I was just talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, yeah, everybody has that situation. I mean, it's a struggle. Comics are one of the hardest things you can do. Like, cause you're, you're kind of getting like working as hard as an animator, but probably not getting paid like an animator. Um, so it's interesting. Um, well, and you're like working way harder than a storyboarder and not getting paid as much right. as a storyboarder. Right. You're working harder than a concept artist, but not getting paid as much as a concept artist. I mean, it, it's across the board, but for comic books, you have to be all of those things. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you could even say it's like uh, an extra in a movie, you know, because you have to come up with those characters in the backgrounds of all your shots, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't right. get paid as much as an extra in a movie, like movie either. Like and, all well, all the parts that make up making a comic. It, I mean, it, it's it's sad to say, but it's like, yeah, you're not going to make as much money as any of the things that like come out of like your actual creation. Which even is, game you know, development. Even game you, development. You have to love like doing it yeah. more than anything. Because you're not a lot of the times going to be drawing and creating and animating and doing everything, and uh, uh, you'll have to do other people's artwork or transcribe or translate it some other way into some other medium. That's where it starts to kind of feel like work a bit, because you know, or you'll have to find how to make your part of the art shine through that design somehow, like with your animation. Like people aren't looking at the animator because of his character designs, unless he designed the characters. They're looking at how he takes those character designs and moves them. So when comic books are so many hats that you got to wear, you're literally doing even the, the cameraman work, you right. know, you're, you know, and it's, you're the uh, act. You're the acting coach. You're, you're the, the acting coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the, the choreographer. <laughs> the, but, you know. Yeah, the the visual effects artist, the lighting team. The, and know, I was saying, I was actually thinking how I would do a comic scene of a, uh, a an unarmed man uh, facing up against a sword thrust, and how the physics of that work, uh, and into uh, you know how he successfully like. It, it was in uh, the uh, the Count of Monte Cristo movie, the more recent one with Guy Pearce and them. It's like the final sword fight scene, but it's a cool little technique how they shot it. And then, like in my head, I'm like, how would I draw that scene in a comic? So it's like I didn't even think my brain would do that, <laughs> you know? Like start thinking sequ sequentially so well. Yes. Because, but like, because I see movies in my head mostly like in motion, but now it's like it's composition. I, I, I talk about this one all the time, but I think one of the best um, I think one of the best things that uh, every like maybe budding comic book artist that wants to like do action scenes if they have not seen it, they should all go watch the documentary Jackie Chan's My Stunts. And it gives you a visual breakdown of like the, the triple and quadruple beat of yeah. action, reaction, hit and then aftermath and uh, like from like multiple angles and how you want to like, and it doesn't matter. Like if you're panning camera, you just now just translate that in your head to like panel work, like happening, like, okay, like it's going to be this picture, this picture, or like moving camera up, like mm -hmm. this picture, this picture, this picture with like the fight happening so that you realize 
and w once you uh, can break stuff down that, like that, like an actual action choreographer, you'll start to see how kind of bad some other people's like like action choreography is in comics where you're like, where, you know, those parts where you get into a comic where you just visually you're like, wait, what's happening here? Is he punching him? Yeah. And then are they turning down and like falling here? And it's because, um, you know, a lot of people don't realize that even with the comic medium, you, there's certain rules to like 180 breaks and flipping a camera back and forth that you just still have to follow to make a visual medium uh, still work properly. So mm -hmm. yeah, Jackie Chan's my stunts is like, Primo. Joe, in the last 15, do you want to double back on the subject and kind of get to some core like points that maybe you wanted to bring up? Oh, yeah. I, we can we totally do a concise little, uh, you know, roundup of everything to help everybody kind of nail in. Uh, again, I, mean, I just saw that. Bad. I just saw that. I was going to get lost in what Billy was going to say and go off another bit. I was like, no, no, we have 15 minutes. Hold on. <laughs> I got to check with Joe real quick. Bullet point yeah. one, Joe's a baller. Bullet <laughs> point two. Joe's a baller. So the, uh, the big thing I want to round up first is the chat. Um, Eric McIntyre is saying he likes reading comics, not making them. However, he says he does enjoy writing. Uh, uh, he likes writing short stories all the time. So mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. I... I think like that's another maybe one of the points that we can round up here, which is uh, not everybody needs to do this professionally. Um, you can really enjoy doing comics, and technically, if you're doing things for money, it somewhat takes some of the the fun out of it. And you're, I think, just in the it's the nature of it. Uh, if you're if you're having the pressure of this, you know, money making thing and surviving, it's going to take a little bit more of the fun out of it. You know, um, it's just the nature of it. Um, well, it, it, it's a, it's a different thing because, uh, I don't want to say they're like totally different, but like there's, I say that there's a, there's like a fine line or maybe a Venn diagram of like, there's like artists that really like are like dreamers more. And then there's also artists that are like craftsmen that just love getting that pen down on there and just, gritting it for like hours you know i mean like and there's a middle ground crossover you know definitely but uh like i would say some are like artisans and the other ones are craftsmen you know because like sometimes like so even when there is deadlines like that's where you find the enjoyment is like in the action in the work you know like pumping out like yeah no well, not the crunch just like <laughs> producing yes 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 that's what just i mean being, by it. Not, not like the dead not, 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 like being, being, late, not being stagnant you know just yeah, like yeah. The, the, the fact because you know like i know for me if not given direction like i don't produce a lot of art but if people are like, do this, do this, do this, I'm just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm not okay, like, yeah, yeah. Guy. like that's why I worked well in concept art because they're like, can you just do a bunch of this? I'm just like, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. You know. So I, I like that point because you're, you know, you're you're right. There is the fun that's going to remain there no matter what. Um, but it brings up two things, and we're gonna we're gonna I should have wrote this down with the camera um, on my page because then we could have a visual for it, but. Um, so number one, I think value, like what you want to do, like know what you want to do, mm -hmm. have an idea, maybe make a comic with while you're working a day job and see what you like about it. If you like it enough and you're um, then able to figure out if you're getting clients, if you're getting clients, are you getting paid what you think you should be? And if that's the case, or is it enough to, to pay for, um, you know, your just your necessities and then try to figure out if that's even doable. If you could, if you do some version of part-time work at your day job versus part-time work, you know, uh, on comics or, or just illustration. Um, so, but comics is a good trading, uh, training ground for this. Cause it's like, if you can draw comics, you pretty much can draw a lot of things. We talked about how they tie the storyboards and everything. Um, so that's two. The third one is your, you know, your behavioral kind of your life, pretty much real life. So is your RL sustainable um, to produce the work? You know, do you have enough time to get in there? You know, do you have kids? Do you have, oh, you know, wife and kids? Do you have uh, someone? A Patreon. 
<laughs> you have you have like an elderly grandparent you have to be taken care of because that all that all adds up, you know. Yeah. If you have twenty dogs that you that you got a kennel and you're you're your foster family or something, it all comes into play. So um, that all will help. Um, the The last thing was um, figuring out when I when I talked about do you, are you having fun with it when you do the work um, when you try to get paid. One of the downsides of like needing the money versus having the day job is the pressure. So if you're uh, a green kind of artist, you're going to probably have a lot more pressure. It might even make you choke a little bit, like like not physically, but like your hand might get stiff, your art might just get stiff because you're needing it to come out um, and not wanting it, you know what I mean? So uh, that's generally those artists that have that kind of problem, I would suggest go back to your sketchbook and just pretend everything is, is a sketch again, you know, even if you're getting paid for it. Right. It's a, it's a, I've never heard anyone putting put it in those words before. I really yeah. like that. Need like uh, need, needing it to come out more than wa wanting it, it to come out. That's a that's a trip. It can, yeah. it, can, it can mess with you bad. It's a right? one of the uh, that's like the that's from like the Tao Te Ching, it's like the Wu Wei thing. Another another Zen type of principle from um, from that where usually. If you try to go fast, you end up being slower. If you try to get something so hard, um, you usually don't get it. Um, but it's usually when you let go, feel it out, it usually comes to you. And yep. you know, that's just how it goes. And and with art, it actually comes into play more often than you might think. Uh, I said that on Lucy's uh, thing. He asked me about artist block or anything. Well, you know, what do you do to really like change that? And it's like, first off, step away from what you're working. Cause your brain's already having the problem just because you walk away doesn't mean you stop thinking about it but start surrounding yourself with the outside world there's always something going on pay attention that might drive that inspiration but separate yourself a little bit and take that time but that's only one technique it doesn't always work <laughs> so right. it's so hard there's so many factors into mm -hmm. just figuring things out let alone uh, like d doing this thing professionally which if you really have a love for comics, go for it. You know, I'm, this is not, this is not a deterrent for you guys to like scare you away. It's more like, here's the, here's the, here's the hurdles, you know, hurdle number yeah. one, two, three. If you nail each one or nail one at a time, you're going to figure this thing out. Um, but if you don't pretend that if you pretend there's not these hurdles in the way, you're just going to stumble into them. Like I did. The one thing that I wanted to bring up that I never brought up was I did quit my job early. I quit for a, about nine months. I quit my day job and I failed. Like the, the clients that I thought I had disappeared. The the yep. work that I did get, I got down on you know on the rate lower than I, what I wanted to. Um, and you know Scary. when you, yes. Yeah. So the thing is, I saved up enough. It was the yeah. different thing where I wasn't planning on needing the money from those clients. I was like, I saved up enough where I could do it regardless. So I had a little bit of a safety net. So if you are going to quit and you're not sure, that helps. I would say save up about six months worth of uh, your necessities, and that will give you a good buffer. That might help with the pressure situation where you need to get the work out. Um, so yeah, you could also yeah. find a job that you can work at for maybe like a year that you know is like through the grapevine. They're going to fail, but they give out severance packages. You could go and work for them for a year. Just don't quit. Just wait for that to, to drown out. Get your severance package and then jump in. Actually, a lot of I feel like I feel like Greg is actually insinuating something more sinister. Oh, something salacious. Hmm. It sounds like he's like describing here. Is he like wanting to say that you need to be? I don't know. Like I feel, I feel like he's describing, you know, fast cars and even faster women or something. You know. <laughs> well, I told Joe that I'm wanting to do a show. I think for my channel, uh, but I wanted to call on all the CG artists. And uh, this, I, I think it, this this video today kind of lines up right into it. Joe is like. The other thing you're going to deal with about being an artist professionally is things like the Hunter Biden situation. And I'm not being conspiratorial. It's the fact that, hey, CG artists, 
you want to come on Zane Studios and talk about it if your art's better than Hunter Biden's. <laughs> Dude, I I thought you were gonna say, "Dude, did you find those pictures of me with the crack pipe and the fucking whores?" I mean, were you with oh, <laughs> oh, a connection? I was like, I was like "Wait, what do you mean?" Like... <laughs> but no, it's like, how much is that guy's art actually selling for? Is he and actually we all, an artist? And, and no, he is chose it? to be. It's money laundering. We all know what this is. It's old oh. school money laundering. I thought but, he was. I thought he was a fake businessman. Dude, well, yeah, sure, but he's got to serve his, you know. So we have the crack pack. Now he's and a so, fake artist. Oh, that kind of so me off more. That, that's what I mean. It's like we're the crack pack, but we're doing real art. Yet this chomo's over there doing this, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this stuff. So and making millions. So I want to, I want to like collaborate with other artists and have us all just kind of crack talk this dude's art. I don't know exactly just, follow that logic, but um, what uh, you think his art's good? You're gonna buy one? No, I was gonna say he needs to stay in his lane of like hmm. fake businessmen. <laughs> <laughs> He's got all a few things going on that are problems. Uh, I wanted to, uh, I want to say, yeah, I agree with, I agree with like you wanting to remain focused. We'll say that. Um, <laughs> I like I like that what I like about everything we're talking about is um, like knowing where you're going. Like I think that's like maybe yeah. the most important thing. Like kind of see where you're going, even if you don't have the plan. Um, just just keeping that in the peripheral vision will help you. Um, yeah. Regardless, uh, we are coming uh, across. Uh, we got some crack packers up in here, which I, I can I can say um, legally. Hey, EVS uh, EVS disavowed left last night and denial is not just a river in egypt EVS. you you use it you just don't know it it's a metaphor it's not real stop being so soft i just like i just like messing with the crack pack because they they're they're needy bro they're needy folks <laughs> they're fiending uh, joe they're fiending it they're fiending for it i get it i jumped in the dumpster before you know I <laughs> <laughs> that, that needs to be a t-shirt i jumped in the dumpster Bow. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> dumpster, dumpster jump. Oh my god! Oh man, no cowards. In I'm tr I'm trying to push hashtag tater pack. Tater like, pack. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with tater pack. Yeah, tater pack. <laughs> and Johnny, you have get rid of tater in your blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're Irish. <laughs> no, no. no, no, it's that, that clip of that guy that Shane always plays. So that yeah. dude, it's just potatoes in his blood. You know, he's oh, like, I, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I, I dream of potato. I love the potato. I think that's my favorite clip he plays. Yeah, and it shows just everybody happily, like you know, getting the potatoes out there, and that dude's just like stoked, like you know, if like that's the thing. I mean, whatever you're gonna, I think. I mean, one of the things you just have to think about is like. Whatever you're gonna do, like just make sure that it's like it makes you passionate about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sherry's saying, uh, "Oh, uh, I don't know what she's." Oh, inter inter competi inter competitions. If you can find competitions and just want to like have fun building that ego up, throw out some some of your artwork in some competitions. Small one. Start out small, then grow. I wouldn't go for the corporate ones because they usually are snaking money behind. So go for like peer group competitions with games. It was more like game jams. So uh, get just, just mosey around. Like Joe's got this, uh, this bike painting competition coming up for anyone that grabbed that star circuit bike. Uh, those things look awesome. Can't wait to start on mine. Speaking of uh, <laughs> star circuit, uh, we've gotten a few backers, uh, recently we're we're so close to 18k that um i can smell it um I can smell those sweet digits um the the coolest part about star circuit is that, that um you're you're going to be reading it probably within a month uh no thanks to that hurricane that came through florida uh we thought we'd be able to get out in, in july but that delayed pretty much everybody that's been using this one printer um but yeah that and you can get a 3D printed bike of the metric X50, uh, the main bike that's that's in uh, Star Circuit. It's right here. It's a limited first edition, you know, gray uh, model that you can paint. And we're going to be doing a competition in the coming year 
uh, for the next, uh, pretty much a competition to get into the, the next chapter of Star Circuit. Um, so mm. go back. Mm. Mm, it's going to be great. I actually have one in front. We grab one because I have the real ones that came in and then I fixed up a couple that broke on the first shipment which suck, uh, but I can keep one of the bad ones. And that way, you know, uh, I'm not taking one of the, the good products. You know how, like, I mean, I don't know if it's just if about people that are into cars or motorcycles or whatever, but you know, how it's just like, you never get, if you're, if that's your gem, you never get tired of just seeing a car or a motorcycle do a burnout. I think that's why this page is just beautiful every time I look at it. Cause it's just like seeing a motorcycle. I'm just like, oh yeah, this is where he does the burnout. Yeah. Mm. Like, <laughs> Yes. Can never get tired. I mean, like, why would you ever get tired of a motorcycle spinning and then skating and taking off? Like, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you just said because I took my headphones. But oh, uh, he was talking about a motorcycle skidding. You never get tired yeah. of seeing it. Oh yeah. That's why, that's why this page always works when I see it. I'm just like, ah, oh, yeah. Like, you know. I mean, so you never get tired of seeing. Here's the bike, everyone. So this is prime. Ooh. Extra dark. Wait a minute. We don't have the Amish in here. Eric McIntyre is saying he's not a fan of car and bikes. He's a horse and buggy guy. I didn't know we had a we had the Amish in here. Yeah. Look at that. Something to get it to, to 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 have focus, but it's pretty cool. It's 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 the bomb's got a lot of good detail. You can see the yeah. Track. You can see it. Yeah, it's sweet. Um, this is like I said, the one of the ones I fixed up. It's got it got a little beat up, but it's the one I'm going to keep. And yeah, this one's ready to be painted. So it's primed. You know, all you have to do is get your acrylics or whatever you're going to use, uh, get real. So like we like like Joe and I and everyone says like I'm paneling the tires. I'm a giant, so I'm about like <laughs> two hundred times Joe's size. So that print right. in my hand looks like no. I'm just joking. This is a mini print. But Joe, man, I can't wait to get that bigger. Print. I was gonna this say like, dude, I, I thought that was like some Hobbit shit right there. Peter Jackson. Like, you, you, like, you like you like passed him over the bike, and it was all like tiny, and I was, and I was like, oh my goodness, Gandalf. Yeah. Uh, v Rose is like, damn, that's huge. And that's exactly what most Jeez. people say to me. Um, but uh, about the bike. So it's um that's it's what good. <laughs> it's a it's a good print, a great print, actually. Uh I've never seen this kind of detail, and we clean them up really nice for you. Uh we hide all the seams we can. We have um specifically the logos for the company and star circuit at the bottom. Um, even the the very bottom of the print has like these grooves, like it's part of like this paneling, which is awesome. Yeah, so let's see. I like I the paneling actually on the tires. They're very yes. Oh, you probably could see it better on mine, Jeremy, since your paint probably covers a little bit. So my paint, I use different glosses between gloss and matte. So mm -hmm. I actually like I the paneling that you're talking about that yeah. looks really awesome. Oh yeah, on the bottom on here. The bottom, the Talking about either, yeah. There's even paneling on the bottom, but um, on the top, guys. If you have fun with your different gloss covers, you can have matte areas. You can blob in some gloss and really like differentiate the panel. So, I had a lot of fun do working on the base alone. Heck yeah! So that is only sixty dollars. Uh, that is like a huge value. I literally we've marked this thing uh, like the the the. Pretty much the retail price we're giving you on Indiegogo is is nearly what it takes. To, I, I might actually lose money on some of them depending on where they're shipping to. So um, we're just trying to make it all work to get you guys these bikes. First He's edition. practically giving these bikes away here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, exactly. Really. Um, and I usually wear the Star Circuit shirt, but those are all here. The trading cards are in. Uh, the book is being printed. I'm doing the sketch cards on stream with you guys. Uh, those we only I only have to do like 30 or so so no way uh, but yeah everything's in all the all the mailers are ready to go this thing will be fulfilling very quickly so help us get to 18k only we're only 80 away so that's like a bike and somebody getting a well, I mean, everybody watching right now like if you don't buy a bike you're basically losing money pretty much yeah these things are going to be probably worth, you know, a few hundred down the road. Um, yeah, down the road they're going to be quite a bit more, I'm sure. I'm, I'm, this is not even a joke. This is it literally says first edition on these, and whoever's yeah. going to have the first edition down the line when this thing is uh, a finished, completed story. Oh, I can't bust mine up now, can I? 
Uh, well, technically yours is not a first edition because it's not the right size, but. No, 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 I know. I mean, like the full size one because I did get one. <laughs> oh, tiny, yeah. So, so I can't bust thing. it up, not if I'm wanting to keep it mint and everything. Well, what do you want to bust? Oh, you want to chip away at stuff? And I want to make it, I want to cyberpunk the bike out. I want to like junk punk it, but no. And you could no. totally do it paint texture wise. I could buy another one. Yeah. <laughs> do <laughs> dread it up, make a, make a cop bike out of it. Like yeah, a full, like ar- full frontal armored, like a big eagle on it and shit. Like I was gonna yeah. implant lights on the inside of the gas tank. Oh, dude, we're working, dude. We are currently working on uh, vacuum. Uh, what do you call this thing? A uh, vacuum, vacuum seal. Vacuum seal. So we're working on actually legit boxes for the next run. So the next one, this one will come in, in like a bubble wrapped box. Next one, you're gonna be we're gonna EVS the shit out of this. So yeah. Um, be ready for for awesome. We're gonna learn from all our mistakes um, as usual, uh, and get out like better and better stuff for each campaign. So, okay, no- R- R- Riverbend like acts like he's a he's never been here, but at the same time he knows what's about to happen. Hmm. It's like now I want to listen to Synthwave. Oh, well, he's been here before. He knows what's happening. <laughs> he knows how the show no. rolls. He knows he knows how the show rolls. That's for him. I'm gonna bring up something slightly different because I I. I think he's been here many a time. I'm just bringing up a different song instead of the huge. Um, right. I got my Vosto soundtrack with uh, Reality Hackers. The, uh, yeah. Good track. Man. Hot fire. Wasn't there are a couple of them on that one, right? Wasn't there are a couple tracks for that one? On like that four, I think. Album? Yeah. Like four, I think. Four. four? Yeah. I just, yeah. I just counted. Um, but hell yeah. So um, let me bring up. Let's bring up one that I usually don't play. Let's see here. That's a good one. We'll go with this one. So Star Circuit, not only do you get the stretch goals of like two extra prints, one even by Jeremy, uh, the colonel himself. He's got one that you get for free as well. Um, so you get those things plus a sweet uh, mixtape full of uh, indie creators, in CG, out of CG, but they're all indie guys that I want you guys to support. It's much better for you to do that than subscribe every month to Spotify or some crap like that. Like you need to support like the guys that are actually making uh, stuff grassroots style. Like that's where everything's happening. Um, so yeah, stoked for everyone to listen to it. We're gonna end the stream on a sweet song by. Um, let's do, let's do the last track. This one is done by. Um, this one's done by Ryan Wynn and it's the, it's the punk track. So we'll end on that. Let's, uh, end the stream. So I just put in the song. We're going to end the stream on that. Anybody else, uh, want to say anything as far as like, uh, last thoughts on your, your growth as far as an artist and getting uh, full-time work or close to it? Your 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 personality, your professionality will speak to your enemies and your friends. Be professional. Please back Starlight Cats. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm stoked for Rex as well. I'm stoked for all the big guys bringing out their their best stuff. Man, black and white looks great. Like there's so much good stuff coming. Um, It'll and- be my first printed work. Like I'm like. Oh, crazy. For like, I, yeah, like so. I'm like, <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> right? There's so many things out there, dude. Uh, I'm blowing my mind. Like, every time I think about all the books that are coming to me, I'm like, right? Uh, Christmas is just going to be a good time. I feel like so many books are going to come before Christmas, um, from now until Christmas, I mean, uh, holiday. So, um, yeah, last thing, um, let's just go around and, you know, tell uh, where we can find you on the web. Um, me, of course, Catapano Art, you know, right here. Catapano Art is where you find me. Instagram for Billy. He's saying Ghost Monster with a three in there. Mm-hmm. Look at that. <laughs> That's an <intent. laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, thanks. Blue, Blue Teddy Narration says, uh, thanks for stream, guys. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, have a lovely day, everybody. Thank you for coming by, dude. That's that's an amazing. Um, please subscribe. Please, please like the video. i got plenty more uh, like that's uh, coming. 
And Jeremy, where can the crew yeah. Studio Zade at, on uh, Twitter, uh, Zade Studios on YouTube. We have a channel uh, that we run every Friday with me and my brother about Beckend. If you love RPGs, especially exper experimental uh, prototypes that don't look like that, they look like finished games, go to Steam and look for Beckend. It's a free prototype. Go check it out now. I'm working on page one of the comic series that'll launch a giant series i've clocked 50 issues so that's a lifetime of a career doing this so i've got the long term so guys go check it out subscribe like this video joe does art bros with me on wednesdays so come back then okay. and then yeah get billy get billy on art bros like we gotta we gotta do we something we, gotta, we, we need a big like hang we need to hang art bros mm -hmm. yeah we love gonna... promote your books too so so mm -hmm. yeah if you got books get in touch with us we do. We have uh, we have open slots all the time. Uh, we got uh, Octopus Cowboy coming in uh, this Wednesday, so that'll be a fun one. Stoked nice. to see uh, him talk about because he's an interesting guy. I saw him on uh, Global Frequency. Shout out to Neff. Um, so Neff, yes, yes, crack back for him. Um, so Ow. let's get out of here. Uh, go have a fun day. Have fun working, guys. I'll be working on a lot of stuff. Enjoy. Thanks for joining me, guys. Peace. Are you saying the sound's not working? Uh, was I wrong? Oh, wait, wait, wait. What? It, you have to keep us muted, but not you. Yeah. Wait, if I mute, it, it kills everything? You no, know, no, it, it kills the music. Yeah, yeah. If you, if oh, you mute yourself. Damn, guys. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. Try it again. It's Take two. Right. It. Just try it again. Uh, I'm going to pull back just a minute. Thank you.